But in the end, LSR did get the last ban, so I'm sure it's, you know, that was probably in the cards for them anyway. Uh, something else, actually, that I hadn't mentioned, uh, John, is actually that uh, we had seen LSR play Clubhouse just as recently as One Shot. It was also in CL playoffs, and LSR actually beat Parabellum on that map. Well, if One Shot aren't shaking a little bit, high. then uh, might be trying to shake a little bit now, perhaps. Yeah, the Maverick ban. There is a solid chance we might actually see Thatcher available today, unless we have LSR ban it. Yeah, all right. Well, that's unfortunate. I was going to say, if One Shot are very strong with the Thatcher pick, and really any team is, he's just a good operator to have. So, Cali. it's kind of, <laughs> well, maybe not just yet. But, yeah, still have that Thatcher ban. Pretty default stuff so far. Nothing to really overly talk about, I suppose, just yet in the ban phase. Of course, with that Maverick Thatcher ban, you you gotta get rid of the Cade. There are there is there are a couple maps where you can still you know play with the Cade up and use the ban for something like a Valkyrie or what have you. But on Clubhouse, no, way too many little cheek, cheeky hiding spots. Cade is almost an end all be all when the Maverick Thatcher are banned. And one shot using their next ban on Mira is an interesting one. Clubhouse is not a Mira map. Like sure, she can be useful. But it's not nearly as powerful as, like, uh, on, on Cafe, for example. One of Mira's very best maps, Bank, where Mira is extremely useful. So that leaves Valkyrie up. Subarctic immediately going to don that operator. It's a church arsenal defense. I mean, Valkyrie, Mute, Castle, screaming a roam for one shot. I mean, it just allows that that high volatility in the Rome game. You've got more intel to play off, and you don't just need to revolve around your entire playstyle being more intel denial. You actually have a, have a couple of cameras to kind of work with to maybe prolong that inevitable Rome game to waste even more time by LSR, especially if they have somebody like Kento who doesn't really do a good job of finding those entry kills. This Rome game might honestly be a, a really big thing that just applies too much pressure for LSR, and they might not even get a good enough chance to properly push down in the basement site for an execute. And even Kento, right? Sure, he had a bit of a slow game yesterday against Gaming Gladiators, but who stepped up in his place? Young Alec and Giddy, who were getting multi-kill after multi-kill. In fact, if I look back at my notes real quick, right? If I do some, some very quick uh, statistician work, and I look at that game, I believe every single round that LSR won with the exception of one, with the exception of round nine, every single round they won was off a 3K or a 4K by Kento, Giddy, and Young Alec. So, I mean, if that doesn't speak to the pedigree of these players, I don't know what does, but of course, you know, one shot aren't without their playmaking ability as well. I mean, they've got NVK, who has actually adjusted very well to the roster since we've seen the Nocturnes game. You've got Swaylin, the highest rated player in the league, Kilo, Slippery, every single one of these players in this lobby can hold their own, and that's what that's what makes me so hyped for this matchup. Already for LSR, they have opened up the CC wall, spots out NVK. Now he has to make that call whether he wants to fall back down through red or not, but wouldn't be an, uh, that bad of an idea to maybe go for that retreat. So yeah, he'll do just that, moving down in towards lower blue, but there's still the entire other half of the map you need to deal with. Kilo, Slippery, they're all playing in tandem, just waiting for someone to eventually get over-aggressive. This first gunfight might happen rather soon unless Slippery thinks better of it and decides to fall back, but if he needs to, he'll have the audio call of that barricade stacked up in the bathroom and a black eye camera as well, so he'll have plenty of information to make that final decision of whether he wants to actually fall back or not. I'm really surprised that one shot are letting go of this roam so quickly. Typically with that Valkyrie, right? You have those cams, not only are, do they facilitate that roam, but you've also already dedicated them to the upstairs. Now those cams, you know, if they get shot, or, or if, you know, they're on like a hard floor, let's say, are going to be near useless, especially if LSR have a good enough flank watch to make sure that one shot can't, you know, act off that intel to flank. So... The fact that one-shot fell off with just a, after just a minute wasted is a little surprising to me, but we've now spent another minute of LSR just kind of setting up, you know, above the hatches, opening Moto, since I believe it was left soft. Vivid still has... Or Vivid still has one. I think he used one on blue, where he is right now. Inrio, I think, is just now going to go ahead and uh, open up Kitchen. Oh, no. Oh, maybe Moto was reinforced. I, I swear, I thought I heard, like, Zoe open it or something. 
Oh, at 40 seconds left, everything is still decent in terms of pacing, and Kento even finds that opening kill, so having that man advantage does open things up a lot more here for LSR. Not that much utility to really slow them down either, besides maybe that singular toxic canister, but it gets expended with 30 seconds left, so LSR just have to wait for that perfect mult to strike now. And self flash will cause a bit of a delay, and Kilo gets the C4 on Giddy, meaning that back arsenal pressure from above is gone. But Kento lines up another Swalen, trying to crouch walk up on the doorway, will end up dying. Subarctic has hit the floor. Here's the blue push from young Alex Solo. He'll get one and two in the sight. Elisar with round number one. The roam clear very quick as one shot were eager to gift them that control, and the collapse on sight nearly flawless. And Kento as well getting that opening kill. Definitely a big sigh of relief there for LSR having that man advantage. And because we had such a big emphasis on the Rome clear, or not just the Rome clear itself, but the actual Rome established by one shot pardon, they didn't have a lot to actually stop a full fledged execute. So the fact that they fell back very early, it gave a lot of time for LSR to work with. They had a full rotate leading in through secret. They had people stacking up in through both, I believe, the back kitchen area, main stairs, also hopping in through moto leading into church. So really everything was accounted for there by LSR because they had so much time to kill and they had the opening duel as a victory. So again, they had a lot of pressure to, to just pile on against one shot. Yeah, the execute was <laughs> damn near perfect from LSR. And I mean, even with Giddy dying, that wasn't a whole lot of damage to LSR because I mean, sure, they've lost a player, but the main push is going down, you know, Arsenal, or not Arsenal, uh, Churchwall, Moto, and Blue. So losing your top Arsenal player, you know, isn't that big of a deal, especially with the man count they had, ensuring that no one from one shot would be able to walk up towards back Arsenal. I mean, just very well done all around. Now we're going to gym. One shot, not going to mess with the bottom floor any longer. They're bringing out the Frost as their sole shield, so no smoke on this site. And I do worry if Swalen and Kilo aren't in a position to go downstairs and deny that plant, LSR's execute, again, might go rather smoothly. Also, a relatively big emphasis on that cast tension. I mean, that is common, but I feel like it's once again one shot, kind of putting all their eggs into one basket, essentially. I say that term a lot, but it happens very often here in these past couple of play days, so only makes sense. LSR could have honestly probably gone for more of a jacuzzi take and then go for a main presence instead, and they would probably get away with a lot more trickery in comparison to just dealing with this extension head on, but it's not a bad <laughs> option. They've got plenty of util to deal with both the Wamai and Jaeger. You mentioned there's only one shield, so the explosivity of those grenades can more or less be used only for players for those part in just that singular shield, so it's not going to be that challenging for LSR. LSR to get through this exact same default clear. It's just a matter of, again, if they can win that opening duel in a timely manner as well. That Osa shield is something I like as well. We saw Aqualix do it on this map to prevent anyone peeking from CC window. We saw, uh, was it the, was it Gaming Gladiators who did it on Chalet? Someone did it on Chalet to stop a trophy window run out. And obviously LSR had a very similar idea, only it got impacted. We just saw Swalen get his head popped by Inrio on that, uh, I guess elevated angle, we'll call it, outside that breach. Nice shot by the Hibana to give his team the first pick. And, John, not only is that Swaylin dead, not only is that man count, but that's one of two C4s, your only form plant denial now off the board. And I believe Kilo has already expended his two. And now with some of this extension falling uh, back into I the site, pre it might be, yeah, it might be pre-placed. I didn't hear it detonate yet. Yeah, actually, it's still on the board if you look in the right or the left-hand yeah. side. So, yeah, I think it's just a pre-place now by Kilo. Still... A lot of time left for LSR once again to just take their time, drone things out. They've got a couple left in their back pocket, and that's it, and still a singular grenade. And now that Kento has killed somebody in Khan's room, that leaves no more Nitro Cells because that's Kilo gone. So it's just a direct take at this point, Harrison. And Kento has been, of course, afforded his Finca LMG. I'm sure he's very thankful for that. Both NVK and Subarctic now lit up. The Jaeger, actually, we saw previously and still downstairs, despite not having any verticality to play with. Subarctic is going to be allowed to rotate back to main. Never mind, he will quickly go back into the site and lose his life because of it. Inreal vaults into the bathroom. It'll end up being Giddy to get that kill. Vivid, another. Slippery, he gets two. Piecing up both, I believe, in con. But in the meantime, Vivid's got that plant down. Now it's a 3v1 post on Jim. Very difficult site to retake, especially with no one on the metal balcony, no freebies for him to find, and getting detected. LSR know exactly where he's going to be coming from. He's got a couple pings, but I'm not quite sure how much that's going to help, especially with Enrio holding right by the gold rotate. LSR take round number two, and John, just as I said, the execute going nearly flawlessly. Yeah, and for LSR, they were just in a good position to take gunfights early on. They're not afraid to get their hands dirty, so... 
They got Enrio to get the first opening duels of win. Kento followed up. Instant five on three. One shot. They've got to scramble. They've got to lose a lot of their map control. And like you noted, still having NVK in the middle of bar when no one's pushing in from lower main, it did weaken the site presence even more, especially with the Frost as well still in Logi. It was basically a one versus three, essentially, at that point as we still had a couple players rotating around from, I believe it was cons, and someone was still on the roof as well. But still, 3v1. That's fantastic for a site take. Immediately, we had the Thermite as well pop off. I believe that was Vivid getting his one, and he just went for the plant because there was no one there to stop him. So again, a fantastic clear by LSR, and now they've got two on the attack already. And I really like the way Kento plays that Finca too. We see it a lot where Kento will be the entry player, and then once the ground is actually taken and LSR starts setting up, he backs off and plays almost like that flank watch. I mean, perfect example, he was hanging outside the con window, I think maybe even on the roof, waiting for someone to rotate. And I think uh, NVK's position might be a little bit more explainable with uh, Subarctic's death, because Subarctic, right, he died in con. Why would he be rotating to con? I think maybe he was planning to drop the hatch and play for that nitro, and NVK was downstairs to cover him. But because Kento was watching that window, had an eye on the hatch from the roof, kills the Valkyrie, NVK's position down there is now it's kind of a moot point. So I think that, that may, you know, explain it a little better. But one shot are going for the same roam that they did in round number one, employing that lesion, the drone denial, and the info, as well as those castles, you know, help facilitate rotations. LSR opted to full challenge this roam and cleared it within a minute, and it looks like they'll try to do so again. If we have one shot, though, try to hold their own, maybe have just a singular player potentially still in that middle floor or top floor to kind of die or work for a pick, that could potentially prolong this clear happening by LSR. Already four drones down, though. I might be incorrect in that number, but they are very low on drones already so far in this first minute, so maybe that could actually keep this roam defense uh, quite alive for one shot much longer than we saw on round number one, as no one's even been fully pushed out from that first floor just yet, so things are looking promising so far for one shot. Yeah, you are correct in that uh, in that count. Perhaps even five drones down if one of those Twitch drones has been shot. Now make it six. So LSR are being starved for info, and the roam clear has gone down just as fast, but, you know, again, it's come at the price of those drones. Now, they do have damage on NVK, and now LSR have to try and transition to that setup once again. Now, they have plenty of time. They've got a whole minute 40, but there's no Iana on the board. Giddy is completely out of drones. Kento has one shock drone. Young Alec is completely out. It's going to be heavily on the shoulders of Inrio and Davivid to make sure that LSR don't go into this site blind. And at 20... Giddy finally dropping down, getting ready to just do the exact same top obstruction he did earlier. It's once again just looking to be that exact same push occurring by LSR there, rotating around in secret to have the Zofia player just kind of walk down blue and just hold M1 to get work for a couple of picks, and the Sledge can start doing even more vert pressure. But the opening kill is not going to favor LSR. It's going to be Kilo to find that Nitro Cell and bring the advantage 5v4, favoring one shot in this situation. The first open and kill one shot has found in these first three rounds. Now, you do only lose your Twitch, which in terms of utility isn't the biggest deal in the world, but he did still have a drone in the pocket, and he has been a demon on the entry thus far. Luckily, though, your hard breach is still alive, meaning that Moto Hatch, Kitchen Hatch, and probably Blue Hatch has now been opened. Young Alec, once again, going to go for this solo play down Blue when there's 35 seconds left, so his pinch is going to be of the utmost importance, especially now that One Shot have that man advantage. Both Subarctic and Swaylin, as well as Slipper, I believe, are staring in that direction, and thanks to the Toxic Gas Canister, Valkyrie is able to rotate behind Generator. Giddy does get a nade kill, though, to even up the man count. Peeking in is the Valkyrie. They're trying to double up with the smoke, and there's Swaylin. Perfect timing, good call with his team. In drops the planter of Vivid, and he's going to try and plant right behind the shelf. He's got Overwatch of the hatch, but Kilo comes in, denies that plant, and there's only four seconds left. There is no hope for LSR in this round any longer. A triple kill for Kilo, and Inrio will stay alive. One shot, take round number three, and that is their first point. And although we were a bit worried about the early fallback, there was a general lack of information because one shot were fantastic at destroying those drones early on for their roam game, and they actually slowed down LSR by having a Nitro Cell kill favor the way a Kilo, and their positioning was overall just much more vibrant because of that. They had less angles to worry about and less people on the board. It's not a big deal that you lose your you know, Twitch drone, of course. It's not that much of a, a big deal when you're going on that base, like you mentioned, Harrison, but it's the fact of 
you lose the gunner of Kento, someone who really can be that make or break for a final push, someone who can get aggressive and win that one for one. Now having that off the board completely, you have to be very conservative on how you want to go for your pushes, how you want to take those gunfights, and LSR were just completely stretched thin, especially when we still had those toxic canisters cutting off a lot of key angles for LSR, allowing those rotates that you highlighted, especially in blue, to go for a double swing, guaranteeing that kill, and just only having to worry about that kitchen drop with only 13 seconds left. Yeah, that dual play in blue definitely helped them out because young Alec was able to get two kills because one shot, you know, kind of left blue uh, a little bit lax because they were so focused on the front side. I think, you know, maybe that's also another side effect of one shot having a man up. Maybe they felt more comfortable to uh, rotate their players in and around, especially with LSR going for a kitchen drop down rather than that church push definitely also hurt them. But I'm sure LSR aren't too worried about it. They are still one round up. And if they collect one more, then they've, you know, secured at the very least that even side split. Kento is now once again back on that Finca, back with the LMG in hand. And on round four, we'll finally be seeing Cash. Unfortunately, we will uh, immediately get a sound bug due to a drone being shot, which kind of sucks. But there is a shield that Kento is going to have to deal with. NVK playing bottom red, playing right behind it. And his task, of course, is to hold down lounge and ensure that Subarctic isn't to be cleared from below. The Cade, or the Bandit Batteries, actually, are on the back wall. And because of the lack of a Maverick, we probably have to see that rotate with the grenades, uh, whether that be for the subcentral balcony or just someone playing vert underneath, whether that be the Zofia or still somebody with a grenade. That's the big question. Giddy holding the cutoff. He's going to win wow. that opening duel against NVK, having no idea that somebody was inside of the kitchen slash freezer. And having the vertical now established, Subarctic currently concussed. I believe he can still try to get the bandit trick. No, I believe the final lifeline actually yeah. bounced him off of it. So brilliant timing by LSR, not only to get that first blood, but also get the plat wall opened up at a decent time despite the bandit trick. Yeah, and predicting NVK at falling off of lounge and to rotate back in below to try and catch those downstairs players off guard, thinking they were safe because they got that shield. And it turned out, well, they were very safe because of Giddy's cutoff. Well done to LSR to open up that wall in pretty fast time. I mean, it only took about a minute 15, maybe, and they got a kill for it. So open breach. Now they have to turn their attention to one other spot, whether it be Khan or Garage, you need that secondary location to try and execute onto Cash. Now, Giddy will get a nade kill onto Slippery, I believe, just from the Breach itself. Swaylin, though, will get a refrag onto Kento, who looked like maybe he was trying to walk up red or come through secret. And it's only a minute left. Sure, LSR are up a man, but they still have not taken either Garage or Khan. Finally, they'll turn their main attention to it. It looks like it's going to be a Garage, there are quite a number of bodies stacked up. Not only do you have the man in rafters, there's also someone holding his stairs with the long angle. Ooh. They've got no idea where he's peeking from, but no Kilo. He'll whip the shots on one, not on the other, and end up downing Giddy. Finishing him off with the pistol. He's looking for the third. Vivid is right underneath him. Young Alec cannot yet help from this breach, and he's prone. He's completely safe. He knows that he no longer has to get these kills. All he does is waste time. He doesn't know about the thermite rotating, though, and maybe it will catch him off guard, but there's Subarctic once again holding that up position, holding that long angle onto the staircase, and now it's Young Alec in a one versus two. One on red, one in cash, getting slowly choked off and stumped by that Banshee. Low on time, he needs to go for these kills, and with such little HP, he'll be quite easily traded out. Never mind, it is just the C4 to kill him by Subarctic, and we'll even up the score 2-2. Two to two. And not having anybody to directly deal with the smoke player in red, nobody went through lobby to go push him in that lower area, no one threw a nade back towards them. It allowed him to completely isolate anyone trying to help out clear that rafter position in the uh, in the top area because of those toxic cancers in your red. So it allowed Subarctic, I believe, was on the line to go and just completely shut everything down that was being pushed in him from the back of garage and also i believe the actual main garage doorway and he wasted not only so many resources but also just a ton of time which made up for the relatively weak start by one shot on that defense they lost two people immediately it was a five on three at one point but because we had such great team play by both the wamai and also the smoke it completely changed how everything was supposed to unfold in that round and actually gave one shot their second win on the defense yeah, it was two kills in Garage, again, for uh, for Kilo. So very well done. I really expected LSR to go for that clear earlier. I mean, they had the breach open in a minute 15, and then they wasted, like, another whole minute before they even began the clear. So that was a little bit odd, but we are back on Jim. 
LSR have won this attack before. It looks like one-shot are, uh, again, going to be going for, you know, your standard cash extension, which LSR dealt with uh, pretty handedly. I don't even remember, like, the cash side of things really doing anything. That's how fast That's how fast LSR dealt with it, I guess. They just opened the con window, opened the breach, and then that was it. Everyone from one-shot fell back. And... They do have a slightly different lineup this time around, Harrison. They are not opting for the Osa Talon Shields. Instead, they've got Rotero Drones in the hands of young Alec. With that mute still being on the board, it could actually deny a lot of this intel game and also general destruction, but it looks like that mute jammer is not going to be that much of a challenge for Vivid because he can just put that Thermite Charge directly on the top, and because the mute jammers are now in a dome shape, it actually just barely evades it. So mm. they can now begin to slowly clear things out both from cash side and also construction with the help of those Rotero drones hopped out from the balcony slash roof forcing NVK a little farther back and decent map control so far by LSR once again clash is already fully cleared and they really have to maybe just have somebody late push in through Lodgy and then still worry about Jacuzzi and this will be a rather standard take in the first minute yeah I mean a minute and literally everyone from the defense is back on site that's pretty damn good for LSR unless someone from one shot can end up rotating down below. They still have two C4s, but what they don't have is the Valkyrie. No bulletproof cams either, so one shot might be severely lacking on info. I don't know how possible a C4 from below will be, but what is this? LSR, a massive lapse in coverage. I guess assuming that it was going to be okay, even though they don't have the gym window open. I don't really know what LSR's thought process was there, uh, maybe they didn't know there was a bandit and figured that, hey, if it's just a mute jammer, we can go ahead and, and simply breach it. But because of that, they'll lose Vivid's only other exothermic. I don't even think there was a jammer on it. They just assumed because there was no electricity that it had to be a jammer at that point. And yeah, they just had well, no clue a bandit was there ready to trick. So they're going to lose that thermite charge. But thankfully, with Enrio on the Habana and the bandit completely falling back into master, that does allow at least one part of this wall to be opened up, still allowing for a very default take by LSR. But now that Kilo lands another amazing nitro cell, one shot, they still have the advantage. Now, luckily, the Thermite has already used both of his charges, so all you're losing is a body and your main planter, but Kilo, another as he simply swings the window, takes the head off of Giddy, and one shot are making a resurgence in this map. Nearly another one on young Alec. It's Kento, though, to clap back on NVK. Inrio, the next to get traded by Sub, I believe playing in bathroom. Kilo now a full blind, could be susceptible, but Subarctic has his back. Two for the Womai, two for the Bandit, leaves Kento all alone. In a one versus four, we've seen him ace clutch before, but with such little time, he has almost no chance getting lit up, finally downed and finished off by slip. One shot, take the lead. And I know the desk talked about Kilo being rather uh, important in a lot of wins for one shot and just not being there definitely gave a couple losses to them in a few of their matches in the past, but Kilo so far has been doing fantastic on Clubhouse, finding the opening win a couple of times and being incredibly impactful. We saw him on CCTV waste a lot of time and player counts out of Garage. We saw him find that Nitro opening not only in the church defense the second time they attempted and the second time on their gym and bedroom defense and still found a bit more success after getting that first kill, making it the five on four, which for LSR, that was the one thing they were really missing on their attack tapes. Fully cleared out cash room early on. They had Jacuzzi Wall opened up despite the uh, minor mistake done by the Thermite because luckily they had Enrio on the Habana. So they that's all they were missing is just having the man advantage and giving them more room to work with because one shot had to be more passive when they're at the disadvantage. But because that never happened, we still had one shot take away a third round their defense. And now they've got the advantage because they've been playing so well against LSR currently. And the most recent time that they defended Church, remember, they won. Now, instead of a, instead of a lesion, NVK will now be donning the Vigil. We'll see if that's enough for him to get his first pick. He's had a bit of a slow start. It's weird. NVK has had some banger off-stream games, but it seems like he has uh, he struggles a bit when he's actually on-stream. So we'll see if he can you know get the ball rolling and be the NVK that yeah, we've seen him be version. most recently. So, more drone denial on the board. Still the info from the Valkyrie. I'm glad she's making a reappearance. Of course, the castle still here to facilitate rotation. Smoke on site just in case LSR try to play fast, or if they go ahead and full clear the realm, they'll be punished by those gas canisters. Now, LSR, remember, on the round they were successful. It was a church moto take. And one shot did kind of give up their bodies to the to the moto player of Kento. The time they lost, they tried for a kitchen drop down. So I'm hoping LSR don't go for that same play. 
One major thing that uh, kind of shot LSR, at least themselves, in the foot a bit was the fact that they were very low on drone econ, so they were running in blind a couple moments and also not being aware that there was a Valkyrie with Nitro Cells to deny any kitchen verticality. So it did put them at this advantage once again, which allowed more, I suppose, uh, more, I wouldn't want to say volatility, but still a better aggression by one shot in those last 40 to 50 seconds. But speaking oh. of aggression, we've got young Alec in the weirdest spot in bathroom. Nobody checked for him pushing strip, oh. and he wins two immediate kills with the LMG. Five on three already for LSR as we just found young Alec catching a huge opening and completely capitalizing on it. You see too, did you see the way Subarctic was like kind of looking behind him before he rotated in front of the door? I really thought he was going to check for that and young Alec would have probably died because he wasn't, you know, he was looking at the other side of the doorway. But alas, Subarctic turns his back. Slippery tries to go for the refrag, but alas, he's the, U he's the UMP operator and he's peeking into 150 bullets. What can you do? Well done to young Alec to find two very impactful openers, but there is still a roam around the board. NVK is still running amok, although he is only top secret. So he's very close to the site. I'm sure as soon as LSR start to pressure him, he will likely fall back. And there is significantly less time for LSR to play with in terms of setting up for their execute. Both rounds so far on this bomb site, LSR have had about a minute 40-ish to open the hatches, to get their vert play down, to drone sight, blah, blah, blah. Now they only have about a minute. They do have the man count. We'll see if that lack of time punishes them in the end. I doubt, though, we'll see the exact same kind of team play by one shot because it's already that five versus three. Well, we have to see a lot back. more solo attempts out here for one shot. NVK is all the way in the back of dirt to make sure nobody can potentially walk in through the blue doorway. If they rush in through secret hallway, they can maybe get shot down depending on the timing here by NVK. But still, 30 seconds for LSR. They just need to isolate a couple more players and they really should have this round in the bag and still plenty of general utility as well. Things are just looking better and better for them, but that last second impact trick will deny the entry leading the kitchen but there are still plenty of options here for lsr in the final 20 seconds they've opened up church wall but this shotgun could be dangerous here it comes down goes the thermite down goes diffuser another one for swaylin and the entirety of the attack is dead what happened nvk with one kilo another and it's just giddy in a 1v3 it looked like it could not go wrong for lsr but in the end giddy will end up padding his stats and losing the round one shot take a 4-2 half, John, you said it. It was looking so good for LSR. Sure, the kitchen drop down was denied, but they opened up church wall. Swaylin playing close on the wall, downing diffuser, killing Kento, dropping moto, thinned LSR's ranks incredibly. Because you had one more person coming main stairs. You had one person pushing blue. It was one by one by one for LSR, and none of them could win their fight. So in the 3v3, one shot swept. Well done. I did not expect them to win that round, but Swaylin shut me up, as did the supporting cast uh, of MVK and Kilo. And one shot, I thought this was going to be even, but one shot ended up taking the advantage. And that, I feel, had a lot to do with LSR just not knowing what they were about to get themselves into. They had no idea NVK had an impact grenade saved up to deny the hatch play in Kitchen. They had to immediately adapt, get the church wall opened up, and hope that play could work out. And they had no time to drone as there was about 15 seconds left once that exothermic charge finally detonated on triple wall. So they had no idea somebody was playing that close next to the wall near the boxes to actually be that damaging with a shotgun. So LSR, again, just running in line a problem we have seen a couple of times in their first half at least now moving on their defense they won't technically have to worry about that but still losing probably uh, one of the most winnable rounds they really had without them truly getting that success mark it definitely does seem a bit worrying in my mind that we're having lsr choke a lot of winning positions at least in that first half We'll see whether or not they can defend. Perhaps it's just a defender-sided clubhouse. That is, of course, entirely possible, John. We can't rule that out just yet, not until we see more of LSR's, uh, of LSR's play. Unless one shot just, you know, absolutely sweep on the attack, and then, you know, I'm just going to look dumb. But we do have a bandit in play. It's giddy. But this time, the gym window is open. One shot are actually doing their due diligence to deny any semblance of a bandit trick. I mean, they're pre-placed, but... They won't be for long as they flash in, burn the ADSs. Here comes the nade from Slippery, and it is just as easy as that. But no, there's actually a castle barricade there that they haven't opened, so never mind. One shot, uh, 
One Shot did half of their due diligence, I guess. Uh, and the Castle Barricade is still not open. So, I mean, Giddy will end up giving up on that Bandit trick, but with Thermite being, you know, out of Hard Breach charges and Swaylin only with two of those left, your Hard Breach options, if Conwall is reinforced, are now severely limited. Yeah, they can't really do all that much except just going for the standard util push to get rid of anyone playing that close in bathroom, I suppose, unless they want to fall back to not get pressured out from the uh, sub balk. But you can always just sit in the uh, shower stall like Kendo's doing right now. So not that big of a concern oh, just yet for LSR. But still, for, for one shot, they are. They got the standard wall breach done. So I guess nothing too shocking to be worried about just yet by them. But they are taking their sweet time. The Rome game is still afoot, at least in the hands of Enro. He almost tries to melee open Trip Cup to go for a spawn peek, but he's not going to end up finding anything just yet. But at least he is playing in the middle of bar to stop anybody from late rotating main. But I don't think that's on the drawing board here for one shot. They've got a much bigger presence inside of the balcony and inside Jacuzzi as well. Slip will get that first pick on to Giddy. So your bandit dies. That is a C4 off the board. And again, limited plant denial here for the defense because there's no smoke in play. And Valkyrie is now the only one with an explosive in her pocket. Inrio not only has that window jump in for Jim, but, you know, he can also protect young Alec should he rotate downstairs. But Alec is currently playing inside of Logi. There is no chance for him to do that. And with 30 seconds left, it's probably just going to be a horizontal C4 to try and deny if Alec ends up even being in a position to. Now extremely lit up. He's just being chased by NVK, but Vivid has the cross. Good coverage from his team. It looks like the Jaeger is now going to try and rotate upstairs, but young Alec hits the floor thanks to Subarctic, the other LMG on the board for this attack. Kento is backed off all the way to the bathroom stall as Vivid now dies. Four versus two, but the time is so low. Now it's all up to Kento. All he needs to do is deny the plant once, but there's so many people surrounding him. Nearly an impossible task. Kento falls to the floor and one shot take a three round lead and I think it was either because they had a good drone game in that one VX or just via process of elimination they kind of figured out that the Wamai was just kind of stuck in shower so instead of walking right into his LOS we just had everybody moving closer towards the main doorway heading into bedroom and just planting kind of close to the actual concrete wall itself that way the Wamai was basically in a losing position as he had to deal with somebody on the balcony they had to deal with multiple people on the site it was just too much to handle in that one VX but the build up there for one shot was fantastic they were still very calm and collected they got the opening kill and really everything that LSR tried to throw at them was just completely shut down we had that late push in by the Finca which was a little rough around the edges but there was an immediate trade for one shot so they still had the main advantage and they still had all the time in the world to go for that plant position with a dominating position to say the least in the beginning of that second half yeah, LSR are looking they're looking a little rough and I don't I can't like exactly put my finger on it either because it's like the early round goes fine in pretty much every single round they've played so far it's like the early round either goes well or it's mid you know nothing really happens and then they get crushed in the late round and after their initial two executes in rounds one and two looked so good, they were flawless. They completely crumbled the rest of the attacking half. And I'm worried they're going to do that again on defense. I mean, they lost the first pick, whatever, but they didn't reinforce bathroom. Like, you know they already breached cash. You know you burned one thermite charge. They have yeah, nothing to open bathroom. Which means your your Wumai can play way more aggressively, you know, either on the windows or or uh, walk up to the match, just try and hold on to, to the main stairs, walk up, uh, assist Alec, you know, by Lodgy, whatever. But I don't know. It's 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 been weird from from LSR so far. This is not the team that we've been seeing through the past couple of days. In fact, I would I would wager that they are actually looking a little bit worse than they did yesterday. Well, we have mentioned a couple of times this will be their hardest week for sure. And they do seem a bit disjointed because of that, having to play against much more veteran teams. It definitely has put a big toll on them, and they haven't really been able to play up to their fullest potential just yet. But hey, there's still a couple of rounds. It's not over until it's over. So maybe we'll see that bounce back by them eventually. But they have given away 
a lot of opening kills in these past couple of rounds, especially by the hands of Kilo. Now, don't get me wrong, last round it was Slipper to get the opening duels to win, but Kilo in general right now has just been popping off. Even though he's been more on that supportive role, especially now moving on the attack as the Thermite, he is still finding kills left, right, and center, and still doing his job on the hard reach, which is probably the biggest thing you've got to do as that Thermite is get a wall open for your team so they have angles to play with and maybe an option to walk in the site. I'm glad Kilo's doing well because he's had a bit of a, a, a slow season, definitely taking backseat to people like, like, like Swaylin. So Kilo heating up definitely brings a smile to my face. Inro is playing quite aggressively at the bottom of Garage Oof. in Swamp, but actually kills Slip there. Was not expecting him to win that fight, and yet Slip falls to the floor. First pick for Elisar, and there is still a C4 operator downstairs that one shot are going to have to worry about. If they allow Inrio to play here and do whatever he wants, that's a dangerous prospect. I don't know if the drone saw the Jaeger. I believe it did, and that's why Kento is falling off, and Inreal will now fall to a nade. If you can't kill him by swinging, do it indirectly. There's the evener. And, I mean, they have killed the player downstairs, but there's only a minute left, John. They haven't even opened the main breach. Yeah, funny enough, just talking about Kila doing good in his job, and only now does he get the wall opened up. Giddy almost got the bandit trick off, funny enough, too, if only he was able to commit and wasn't worried about get shot, uh, getting shot through the uh, vertical pressure there by the Zofia. That could have actually been a complete stall out for one shot, and they might have had to go for much more of a funnel push than what they had probably expected in these final 40 seconds. Attackers have located a bomb. Yeah, I mean... Same problem that LSR had, you know, they're going to have to choose Con or Garage, and whichever one they do, it's going to be extremely late. I mean, young Alec has been generating his Wamai disc this entire round. I mean, he just got his last one, I think, and they're just going to try and send nades up. Swaylin is going to burn and ends up killing young Alec. I think he dropped off rafters despite there being 15 seconds left. So what could have been a colossal waste of time will end up dying. Vivid will at least deny the red walk up. Plant is going down. C4 from Giddy needs to land and it will. And now the gas is covering that diffuser. One shot are going to have to wade in and take damage at the same time, but they will simply stay static. And NVK won't even try. He will simply attempt to cover his teammate, but his teammate can't walk through the breach. So that position is... Uh, a little useless, and that gives LSR their first round in the last five. And instead of it being with someone playing in both the top of red and someone just hard stalling for the defense inside of rafters, it was actually somebody in cash room, that being Giddy with the nitro cell, and then your smoke, of course, still holding quite comfortably inside of red. Now, he did allow a couple players to actually push in, but, I mean, he still had the smoke canister for the plant denial, so it still made one shot uh, put in a very uncomfortable position, and they exactly. didn't have a lot of time nor much of a player base left to get really hyper-aggressive. They were more or less playing in that position to just cover the plant from going down. So when they didn't take into account there still being a lot of util in the back pocket of LSR in those final couple of moments, everything just kind of turned into a bad, a bad scenario for one shot. Although they do have a couple of rounds to bleed, them still giving a couple of moments here and there for LSR is definitely not the best idea, especially since they are still technically that top team here in CL, and both these teams would, you know, they're pretty close match against one another. You know, good example, this matchup right now. They are still rather close to one another, despite some of the mistakes, mistakes we have seen. We'll see if LSR can waste uh, that much time again. I'm sure they're certainly hoping to. They do really only have the Mute and the Valkyrie for this roam, though, if they even go for it. It looks like Inrio is really the only guy upstairs. The cameras might be used more for the basement than they are. Yeah, so two covering main stairs, in fact, and probably that last one either somewhere in church or somewhere in Arsenal to stare at a at the default plant spot. So LSR are actually going to hard bunker, the complete opposite of what we saw from one shot uh, nearly every single time they defended church. And I mean, they have, you know, they have the operators to do it. They've got uh, they've got a shield, they've got the smoke for that plant denial, they got two C4s, and plenty of utility denial as well in this Wamai and Jaeger. So, one shot are gonna, certainly going to have their work cut out for them, no freebies on that roam. I still think having at least somebody get a little aggressive like what Young Alec is doing, though, is a great option, just to kind of force yourself, be that presence, like, hey, I'm here, you still need to deal with me, kind of waste a little bit of drones, it buys up a bit of time against one shot, then he can fall back and still have that safety net of the actual bomb site. 
So not a bad option. Maybe you would have preferred having someone play near main stairs as well. Then they go for that full back. But depending on how fast they are to rotate away, they might get uh, met with some sort of vertical pressure by the sledge if they are actually very slow in that retreat. So better safe than sorry. I suppose for LSR is they're able to keep that five on five. And again, they still have a gigantic emphasis on this util game. So they really are set up for this proper anchor in this next minute 30. Already trying to impact trick the hatch. And I believe at least some of it has been successful, if not completely. Enro gets the first one. Another X guy was charged detonates, but it's way too far away from the impact. So half the hatch will get opened up. And now it looks like we'll have a very standard push here for one shot in the final minute 20. And of course, I mean, impact tricking a Havana. Not the biggest deal for the attack anyway, even if it is successful. So I mean, he did waste a fair bit, and that leaves Swaylin only with four. But I'm sure Kilo still has, yeah, he's got an exothermic charge still in his pocket. So if they want to go ahead and open up Church, they still have the opportunity to. They've got Blue Hatch open as well, so the Jaeger will be stationed watching that. I believe that's, uh, is this NVK? Yeah, okay. NVK encroaching on the main stairs. And One Shot are looking for a kitchen drop-down play. They've done the necessary vert. They've completely flushed out back arsenal. Now all they've got to do is establish the angles to ensure that once they do drop Kitchen Hatch, LSR aren't going to be there waiting. And LSR have been backed up quite a bit, all in church over by Box 1 and Dirt, so Swaylin's drop might be relatively safe, save for, you know, a, a wayward C4 or so. The shield from Inreal could prove dangerous, but Swaylin's actually going to push into Dirt and get the kill on Vivid, but he's traded, and that means he drops Case right in the middle of the site. Slippery will get another kill to tilt the man count in his team's favor. Kilo coming in for the assist as well, but young Alec drops Subarctic playing in blue. There's another one for Inrio. We're in a two versus two, and there's just no time remaining. No chance for the diffuser to be picked up unless the LMG can find its mark. NVK puts us down to a 1v1 and wins it against Inrio. Everyone doubted him, but NVK finally comes up big on stream and makes sure that his team secures the point. Especially after a round that Honestly, looked it to be in the bag of LSR after we saw the case completely forfeited by one shot. They had Swaylin out of all your players, Swaylin to get aggressive when they had case. If someone charged in before them, and even if they lost that fight and Swaylin was there to refrag and then fall back to go for the plant, that would have been a much safer position. Yet we had to have one shot just completely bring it down, pedal to the metal, yet they were still able to win just because they had more bodies to throw at the equation against LSR. A absolute, I, I can say, probably massacre inside of Church and Arsenal. Even then, that would still be kind of an understatement with how much bloodshed we just saw in the basement floor. And we still have one shot win that round, despite, again, Case being dropped. Man, that has, that's got to sting for LSR, bro. I mean, it... I don't know how they lost that. I guess it was, it was just perfectly timed pushes from everybody from one shot. I mean, sure... You know, the Hibana drops this, the case in sight, like you said, but one shot stayed on top of the trades. Almost every single time LSR was able to get a kill, one shot had a response up until that final 1v2 where LSR, you know, swung the man count in their favor, but they didn't expect NVK to be smack dab in the middle of Arsenal, catches one through the blue rotate, and Inrio just loses the fight. And now instead of bunkering, I imagine they've uh, figured that, you know what, that's not going to work. We've learned our lesson. They will do the exact opposite. They'll go for a rather heavy roam. They have the Vigil, the Mozzie, and the Mute, of course. Uh, the Drone Denial Trio, as any good clubhouse roam has. And they've even got the Thunderbird. So if these roamers get a little softened up, they can fall back to the Bastion of the Heels. Maybe even have young Alec join them. He is a three-speed with a rifle, with an assault rifle, after all. And it seems as if One Shot do indeed want to fully clear this. And I'm honestly... A big fan of LSR actually opting to go for the Rome game now because really they could have won that round just based off of the time management. But one thing that should surely swing this round in their favor, at least for now, has got to be Kento winning that first gunfight. Kilo already gone, leaving just the hard breach left here for Swale. And thankfully there's a trade because Slippery has already dropped into Logi and he's there. Right place, right time. So we're back in the four versus four, but still wasting a minute off the board immediately and still killing someone as impactful as Kilo. It's definitely something better than nothing as always. My only concern is that, uh, you know, because this is a heavy roam, then a lot of that hard breaching isn't necessary. So that, you know, Kilo's death might not matter a whole lot. And especially with Inrio dead, one shot now have that man advantage. And I mean, there's a whole minute 35 left. They've got a decent amount of time to play with. Swalen's drone, though, I don't know if it saw Giddy. Giddy is 
tucked in a pretty tight corner, and it looked like the drone just hopped off rafters without checking the door. So, Guinea may have just gotten misdroned. Now, you know, the play, if he's going to make one, has to come very soon. But it could win the round, especially now that young Alec gets the C4 kill on Slippery. Denying so much of that vertical presence, no breaching charges on one shot whatsoever, but the hatch is open. So even though the vert hasn't been fully played out, there's still not a lot of opportunity for the defenders to play there. 50 seconds on the board. We've got a couple of drones left for one shot. They can gather some last second information. They do have to worry about Vivid, though, still having those toxic smokes, but still having plenty of this pressure on the top floor and actually gathering some information via the concussive blast that someone's playing rather close in church to have for that drop down actually through the kitchen hatch. That could actually tailor how one shot want to push this in the final 30 seconds. They're prepared for that first angle. But now that young Alec is gone inside of the back of big box, that's a huge net buff there for one shot. Ooh. Giddy though, beautiful wow, angle. The SMG? MVK is gone. Yeah, with the SMG 11, a masterful shot landed by Giddy on such an important round that equalizes things once again and really tightens the hand of one shot. C4 still in the pocket of Giddy as well, but Vivid is out of gas. Drop comes in from Swaylin. No one's watching it, and in comes Subarctic by AKs, but Vivid, he's got the cover. What a play! Down long, saving his teammate's life and denying that planter. Charles Vivid makes the play and keeps his team in it. And again, it's that process of elimination we've seen a couple times in this matchup, Crow. We knew someone was hopping in through dirt, and the other one had to be on the kitchen hatch, so Vivid got aggressive. He held the crossfire from his team all the way down through main hall shockingly enough despite the fact he had the smg 11 but he just simply hits those he gets the double kill and lsr will still hold on for another round longer now heading up into cctv and cash room this has been a much better site for them do not get me wrong but i feel like the problems that we saw that gave one shot the loss were really more in their ball game in comparison to how well we saw LSR play in those final 30 seconds. If we bad had if we had better management pardon in terms of what utility was left on the board for one shot, they could have potentially catered how they wanted to play in those final 40 seconds to better counteract that, but they still went for the hard default. They didn't get aggressive towards the end of that round and instead were just trying to hold those passive angles to let a plant go down. But again, because we had a nitro cell and plenty of toxic smoke left on the board, it was completely shut down by LSR. Yeah, a lot of indirect stuff happening, or indirect kills and indirect denial happening from LSR. And I mean, not only Vivid, but Giddy also hitting some beautiful shot, uh, a beautiful shot with that SMG-11 right through the hatch. There is a reason why uh, prone peeking the kitchen hatch is very dangerous, and you saw it uh, fully on display there. Uh, I mean, prone peeking anything in this game is pretty dangerous because they, a lot of times, whoever you're peeking will be able to see your shoulder slash the side of your head, uh, slash even like your arm or your elbow, before you get around the corner and uh that hatch is one of the many examples of it being not favorable to the attacker peaking. so two rounds now separate us from ot but one shot have not had less than a two round streak since that lone church win we saw two rounds ago i mean every other round you know the five before that we're in a row. So I don't know if those two spread out wins from LSR are enough to stump one shot's momentum. You know, we'll see in the coming couple rounds, but you know, one shot are known for being a pretty uh mentally sa mentally sound makes it makes it sound like other people are insane. Uh they have good mental fortitude. There you go. That's that's, that's what I was looking for. They are a very uh they're a very good team in terms of not getting chalked. I guess is a good way to put it. Ooh, and there That's goes Inrio. All right. Alrighty then, just running out in the middle of the open after getting droned out. Funny enough, Inrio almost lost that gunfight in the beginning of the last time we saw CCTV in play, and this time he'll just outright lose it against simply no slippery part, no argument against that, that as they had bomb. his full location and he just ran into them, giving the kill for free. So one shot starting in a much better manner than what we saw last time, and they're still in the exact same position pretty much that they were last time we saw the site, except again, they've got the opening advantage already, and they are still just looking to do the exact same thing we saw, but even in, a, in an even better light from last time. Yeah, not only did they have the main advantage, but remember, they didn't get the main breach open until like 30 seconds left, then went for garage, right. cleared it out in like five seconds, and it still came down to a 2v2. So what can one shot do now that they have all this time with the breach open? They're still not going for garage quite yet, which is questionable to me, and that jump in is not going to work. Everybody from one shot 
flips the switch and then dies. And now it's just Kilo. I... You know what that reminded me of? What? You were in Castle Seattle at this point. Do you remember the Nocturne's Rush? Oh, yeah. Uh, what was it? The theme park one? That no, the Nocturne's Rush on, on Clubhouse where they committed suicide with an exothermic charge and then all died in the bathroom hallway. That's oh. what that reminded me of. They were like, okay, we got the breach open. We have so much time. Let's rush. And then, I mean, Slip already got traded back. Swaylin on Hibana decided he was going to hop through CC window. Bandit just killed him. I, like, two people tried to just shove themselves through the breach. There was no control established whatsoever. One shot had, like, lounge and the breach. And we're like, yeah, that's enough. Don't get me wrong. Having a bit of aggression is, is never a bad thing, Harrison, but... I feel like they just kind of jumped the gun. They didn't even clear out Raptors for Christ's sake, yet they had somebody just hopping in through CCTV window. Probably not the best idea. And again, still tons of denial, tons of players here for LSR. It was what, a 4v4 when they went for that commit and they just ran into several crossfires. Yeah, not the best idea, probably either on paper or even an execute because uh, the only thing you had going for you there was you maybe had a small element of surprise of having Swaylin hop in through CC window, but it looked like the bandit of Giddy was very well prepared for that. He immediately killed him, found another, and almost three overall just sitting in the middle of CCTV as bandit. So, I mean, that play just completely floundered. And once again, one shot, they are giving golden opportunities to have LSR bring them to overtime and not have this end out in regulation. Yeah, that was, that was a weird one. And you can also, I, I think I, sh I should also edit what I said. When I say a, a sight rush, it sounds more like it was in the beginning of the round. I guess a, a, it was kind of late. I guess a more apt descriptor would be like like a blitz, mm -hmm. a sight blitz. Because it, it, that, that makes it sound like the, the attack itself was swift, not the, you know, not the point at which it was in the round. But right. we are going to Jim after that digression. And, uh,. Okay, this time, if you, everyone would turn their attention to the top right corner of the screen, LSR have a reinforcement in pocket. So, if Giddy ends up bandit tricking this, I better see I better see a reinforcement on bathroom. I'm begging. Never mind, they have someone reinforce something. Uh well. All right, well, looks like I'm staying open again, I guess. It looks like uh, LSR is not going to make your dreams come true. And one shot uh I had a I had a small feeling that we see only we're gonna get that joke, but still funny. But I, I thought for a second there we might have had one shot go for sort of like aggressive play once again, maybe aggressively swinging uh, through gym slash weight room window. But no, I mean more or less this is used just to maybe try to break the bandit batteries in, in a much more efficient way. But you can still throw grenades through the uh, drone hole. You just have to get that placement almost perfect. There's a my magnet to catch it, and I don't think the bandit battery. Oh no, it is. It was close enough. Is Giddy going to commit to this? Oh, I'll commit to it, but it's the wrong oh, wall. Oh, the wrong side. going to get the wall bin for free, basically. No. Oh, that's tragic for Giddy, man. That is a shame. I mean, not wanting to be next to the drone hole, certainly understandable. Most people also breach towards, you know, the center of the wall and overlap. So, again, also understandable. So, really unlucky from Giddy, because that was free. I mean, he could have just... He could have just tricked it. That castle barricade is still there. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no nade being cooked because Slippery is out. So, a uh, little sad for Giddy there. But if you're a one-shot fan, let's go! They got the wall open much faster. No bandit trick to worry about. The bathroom is still open. There's no Wamai disc to stop that nade from going in and destroying the castle barricade, which I, I think it did. You know, we, we have just as little sound uh, as you do because that is on the game side. It did end up getting that castle barricade. Nade goes in. It will also dispatch the bulletproof cam. So significantly less info going into this round for LSR as well because they have no Valkyrie. One shot really in a prime position to get this bag and hopefully get this out in regulation for all the one-shot fans in chat, but they still need to go and work for this kill. I mean, they are in good Ooh. position to do that, and oh, Slippery just barely misses out on a golden moment to get that first one. Thankfully for the LSR players, they will remain all alive. 40 seconds left, and Inrio's still in red, matter of fact. I'm actually quite shocked we didn't catch this until now. He's been holding on in this one position for okay. such a long time, and honestly, if he's able to find a kill before eventually falling back, this could be huge for LSR. 
Yeah, if he kills that Hibana, there's no need to worry about cash anymore, but the, the stun allows him through. Oh. Slippery gets one kill, but a TK. Luckily, Kilo will get another. Swaylin comes in through Khan, and this match is over. Inrio looks the wrong way, and Inrio evading the flash, letting Swaylin slip through, ends up causing them to lose two, maybe even three bodies and LSR lose their second game in a row. One shot, rip first place away from them. And that was, in general, 